If you're struggling to get rid of big tech and kick it to the curb, I've done some research, I've taken the first steps, and I'm right there with you. I'm Beretta Fleur, and I'm an author, podcaster, and confidence coach. Today, I'm going to review some of the options that are available to us instead of the usual options that big tech serves up. Welcome in. I'm your host, Beretta Fleur. If you're not familiar with my work, I am an author, podcaster, and confidence coach, and I help women and entrepreneurs just like you lead happier, more successful, more fulfilling lives. So basically, breaking up with big tech, it's kind of newsworthy. There's so many reasons why so many of us are not happy with social. So I have taken the first steps to switch around my social media presence over the past few months, and I have some feedback to share with you on a couple of different platforms, as well as some um, user, citizen, whatever you wanna call them, tips and tricks to help you make the transition. And then you wanna actually use the platform that you're on and you wanna connect with people because that's really what social media is, whether it's a business or just social, you're trying to connect with other people. So let's get started. The first step you want to take when you're revamping your social media outlets is take a couple minutes and write down all of the social media platforms that you are on and what you're using them for. If you're thinking about maybe a search engine, which one are you using? Are you using Yahoo? Are you using Google? Are you using Bing? So whatever you're using these platforms for, I want you to take a few minutes, do an audit and write down what you use them for and what you're using. Now that you know what you're using and what you're using them for, what are your frustrations with those platforms? Are you enjoying the interface? What are your likes and dislikes? When you do a switch, you're going to choose and pick the new platforms that you're going to be using and that's gonna be really key into deciding what's gonna work for you. So you're not spending all this time on a new platform making a new profile, setting up new friends, only to just throw it out and be like, you know what, no, this isn't gonna work for me. So now that you've done that, now that you know what social media platforms you're using, what you're using them for, and whether or not you're liking them and what you're not liking about them, we can go ahead and move forward into exploring all of the different types that are out there right now. Number one. Let's look at the big social one, Facebook. A lot of people still like Facebook, a lot of people use it, whether or not it's cool and whether or not people actually like it. So if you're using a business Facebook page or account, or if you're on there for business, that's gonna be a hurtful thing that you gotta get rid of if you take the step away. What we also use Facebook for are groups and to promote our businesses. Groups are huge with Facebook, as well as events. If you're using Facebook for social, everybody has a cell phone, everybody can text, pretty much everybody can share pictures on their phones. There's no reason to involve a third party and to put your photos out there for people to data mine. Think about who you can't live without as far as connecting with them. Like less than a hundred, right? So not a ton of people, not enough to have an entire website, have all of your data for decades that they can use to mine and to censor and to do what they want with. One solution for Facebook would be to create text or messaging threads between people that you're very close with that you wanna share pictures with. Also instead of Facebook is MeWe, M-E-W-E, MeWe. So I've actually tried MeWe for a few weeks and it's pretty quiet. What I've found is difficult with MeWe is that it, because of privacy, it will not mine your contacts. People don't pop up like, oh, if you know this person, you might know this person, right? So that is a drawback if you're lazy. <laughs> um, and also if people that you wanna connect with aren't willing to make the switch. Also since recording this video, I've tried Gab, which is another social media platform similar to Facebook. It has news, groups, and a news feed and interface similar to Facebook. Again, it is a free speech platform, so you're going to want to block and make sure that you're not seeing anything that you don't wanna see. I personally don't love it, its viewer base and user base has grown exponentially since December. 
Another social media platform that I want to cover that's a good solution for businesses is LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn for you might not be something that you ever got into, or it might be something that's more corporate. Um, again, I feel like LinkedIn is what we make of it. For LinkedIn, I'm trying to have that take the place of um, Facebook for me for promoting my business, as well as Instagram a little bit. And I'm gonna see what happens with that. Oh, and LinkedIn also has groups. So if you haven't thought about LinkedIn in a while, or you've never gone on there and you're a business, or maybe you're an entrepreneur, um, that might be a good solution for you is to just start using LinkedIn for your business and see what happens. Maybe more people will start using it too. Another option for social media if you have a business or you enjoy the group aspect of Facebook is Nextdoor. Nextdoor you have to sign up with a legitimate full first and last name as well as your address. If you don't have a problem with that and you want to be more plugged into your community for safety reasons, sharing, um, selling like on Facebook Marketplace, Nextdoor might be a really good option for you. Finally, if you do enjoy the social aspect of Facebook as far as photo sharing, you can use Parler for social and photo sharing. So Parler is going to be what you make of it, um, which brings me into the next social channel that a lot of people are leaving from, and that's Twitter. So Twitter. Twitter never really appealed to me because I felt like, well, I'm not a celebrity, so I don't really need a Twitter account. A lot of people live and die by Twitter. A lot of people love it. That's where they get their news. That's where they find out you know, what's going on with all of the famous people that they care about. If you're looking to stay on a Twitter-like place because you like having news and headlines pushed to your feed, that's kind of how you stay plugged in to the world, Parler is going to be um, a good bet for you. Parler does, um, instead of retweets, they do echoes, which is basically the same thing. So you're gonna find a lot of similarities between um, how Twitter works and Parler works. Parler does have a character limit as well, but I think it might even be up to 1600 characters. So you've got a lot more room there to post photos and the ability to use hashtags to search and get your content out there. Like Twitter, you can get verified. You do have to provide information to Parler. Now, Parler does allow not safe for work content. Um, if you're sensitive to that, they are supposed to mark it as not safe for work. Um, sometimes people will take advantage of trending hashtags and put a little something something on there. <laughs> if it's very blatant, you know, pornography, you do have the option to report it as porn. In spite of the whole no censorship thing with Parler, um, I haven't seen a lot of crazy stuff on there. So um, for people who want to kind of get into it, um, trolls or whatever, um, it's really easy to just block people and then you never have to deal with them anymore. Some people might find that Parler feels like a little bit of an echo chamber um, if you're not conservative leaning or you just don't care about politics. Again, it is what you make of it. If you do enjoy that free speech platform or not worrying about, you know, what the platform is going to think of you when you're posting things, um, I would say go for it. Also since filming this video, I've tried Telegram, which is kind of a messaging app, but it also takes the place of Twitter in that you can follow celebrities and you can also post media and updates. It's not the best for groups, but it does have a lot of features that are similar to the kind of format that Twitter would offer. Okay, the last social platform that I wanted to cover is Instagram. You know, Instagram, I mean, if you're a business or even if you're not, if you're an influencer, if you're an artist, if you're a photographer, um, you might have a love-hate relationship with Instagram. Working for a long time in the publishing and design industry, Instagram, when it first came out, I was like, oh, I love this place. It's so visual. And okay, it started getting more curated and more businessy. And then there were ads. And then it kind of, it really started being a business tool for a lot of people. So Instagram, it's part of Facebook. If you disagree with the policies that Facebook is putting forth, you're gonna have a problem ethically, morally, whatever, with Instagram. 
So what do we do? Well, for me, for now, I haven't found a huge replacement for Instagram, but I will tell you that Parler has started to become my Instagram. And here's why. Because Instagram basically allows me to continue to push visual content. The one thing with Parler, which I think they might change, there's a lot of stuff in the works that they want to improve. They might be adding groups, which would be awesome, but they also might play with their image formatting. Parler right now has a kind of that 16 by nine, I wanna say, it's kind of rectangular. Right? So there's an image format, so when you do post photos, you have to transform them to be um, kind of rectangular if you want them to display properly. So after we've gotten used to like the Instagram formatting, that's a little weird. But you can do a carousel of images, which I like. Um, if you have a couple different links, say you have a video and then a blog post that you want to share in the same post, you can do that and it will show up as a, um, a sliding carousel of images. I really enjoy that Parler allows you to do links in your content. Your posts have clickable links. So that's something that um, Instagram has not had and you've always had to go link in profile, link in bio, and then have a link tree. So I do like that feature. If you're using Instagram more socially and you like the stories aspect, MeWe will have that option for you. But again, MeWe has been a lot more quiet than Parler. Parler has tons of users, which I love. MeWe does not. So as far as the hashtags and the user base and sharing your interests and being able to link in posts and being able to share common interest and being able to promote your business, Parler is definitely gonna be your Instagram equivalent to that. Now that we've gone over the social, I also do wanna address video platforms, because hello, and search engines. So video platform, a lot of us are using YouTube. First of all, it's kind of been the industry standard since like forever. We're all very used to YouTube, right? What I'm not happy about is all the different changes to the user agreements that they've been making. They've changed how you can monetize things. They've changed um, if they don't like your content, they can just pull you and all of that years and years of work that you've spent building your business and you know driving ad revenue to their website and users to their website for years. They don't care, they'll just take your channel down. And that just does not sit right with me. First of all, if you want to for now, you can stay on YouTube, um, but it would behoove you to serve out your videos on another platform as well, just because we just don't know what's gonna happen with YouTube. If you're with me and you want an alternative, Rumble is going to be a good alternative for now um, for YouTube. And let me go over the differences because there are a lot of them. You can use YouTube and you can use Rumble. Rumble has different licensing agreements. You do retain copyright of your videos and your content on Rumble. And this really confused me at first. But you do retain copyright, but what they take care of is the distribution. So Rumble has several different licensing options and a couple of them offer you monetizing options. Basically, you can decide, okay, Rumble, you can take my video and you can push it out to every platform as you see fit. So if your video goes viral, Rumble can just do whatever it wants with it. You can also push it out to YouTube. It's basically serving out your video. Um, there's another usage right that you can choose, which um, distributes it to everybody else except YouTube. So if you are publishing also on YouTube, upload your videos to YouTube, but also upload to Rumble and choose that second option which allows Rumble to distribute everywhere except YouTube. If you don't wanna use YouTube at all, just don't let them push out to YouTube. So that second option, and that's still gonna allow monetization for you, um, but it's also going to keep them kind of separate, both YouTube and Rumble. Speaking of monetization, Rumble doesn't really have that many advertisers yet. So I've found that my videos have taken a while when I upload them with the monetization option. Um, it'll say analyzing, it's because it's searching for advertisers. So there's not a ton of advertisers with Rumble yet. Even if you do select your videos to be monetized, you might not see revenue just yet from it. And it's because it is a new platform and it just hasn't built up the steam that YouTube has. So if you do rely on monetization from your YouTube, I would say hang on to YouTube as long as you can, make as much money as you can with them, but use Rumble as a fallback and you might start seeing that revenue stream start coming in on Rumble. 
The one thing that we do like about YouTube as content creators or even as people just liking to watch binge watch videos is that it keeps that content kind of coming at you. They've got next video, they've got those little cards that show up, like watch this next because I wanna keep you on my feed and on my channel as I knock over my plant. And I know that you enjoy my content, so this is gonna be relevant to you, right? So that's what I enjoy as a creator about YouTube and a lot of users like as well. So um, Rumble does not have that. Um, that I've been able to see. What Rumble does have is this interesting sort of, it's like um, almost like a dating app feature. It's called Rumble. When you publish a video on Rumble, you get entered into a Rumble. So basically, um, you're in a pool of other users that have uploaded that day and people can swipe right or left to like or dislike your video. And then if you win, you get money or something. Do try and check out Rumble and build up a safety net for yourself and your video business. And do tell people that you are on there. Keep your username the same. So if you can right now, start making the transition over to Rumble and let your audience know. Let your audience know why. Um, if you want to, send out an email. If you don't feel comfortable going out on YouTube saying, hey, I'm leaving YouTube. <laughs> Say, look, they might pull my content and I worked really hard to do this and I worked really hard to create content that I know you guys wanna see. Do what you can to salvage all that hard work you've done and move your content over to Rumble. Now that we've covered social, we've covered video content sharing, the last thing is search engines. How we find our information on the internet. A lot of people have a problem with the privacy issues with Google. Um, I have actually switched from Google phones and the Google search engine for about a year, and I've moved everything to Apple. For my search engine, I do use DuckDuckGo, and I also use Bing a little bit. I can tell you that because of the privacy, DuckDuckGo, um, especially when I'm looking for restaurants or food delivery, when I'm starving is really subpar when it comes to comparing it to Google. So sometimes I will sneak on there and be like, google.com. But with that convenience and that ease come the privacy issues. So this is interesting. If you are a business such as a bar or a restaurant or just any business, get listed and list yourself on TripAdvisor and Yelp because DuckDuckGo and Bing are going to come up with those search results. Oh, and Yahoo. If more people are making the switch and they're gonna use a different browser, um, that's how you're gonna get found. I would also suggest making sure that your business has its own website. It's always good to have your content hosted on your own website. I have spent many years doing different types of website building. There's Site Builder, Wix, and WordPress. For website hosting, GoDaddy also offers domain names, email addresses, as well as site builders. And those are gonna be the main website builders out there that are super templated and relatively easy for anybody to use. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful to you. I am on all of the social sites that I've mentioned at Beretta Fleur, so go ahead and jump on board with me and I can become part of your new social network. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give it a like and a subscribe. Please feel free to email me. I am at berettafleur at icloud.com.